Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Pray First. It's so good to be here with you guys. Uh, get in here and let's talk about afterlife. Let's talk about heaven. Let's talk about hell. Let's talk about its existence. Or do you not believe that it exists? And what do you base that on? That's been one of the driving points of this is not just whether or not you believe. And, you know, <clears throat> from the culture and the area that I come from, everybody, it seems, believes in heaven. Everybody, it seems, believes in hell everybody's, you know, been to Sunday school their whole life and been to church their whole life, but that's not the experience of all of you who are listening. And that is certainly not the experience of people all over the world. So I think my goal in this is not to convince you that there's a heaven or convince you that there's a hell or convince you that there's an afterlife. While still obviously coming from my perspective, my goal is to get you to ask, why do you believe that? If you believe it, why do you believe it? If you do not believe it, why do you not believe it? Share this out on your page. I'm coming to you today from one of our Cross Point Campus cafes. Uh, the reason, you know, to do something like that is because they have, they have muffins. <laughs> they have muffins, they have coffee, they have drinks, they have cinnamon rolls, and that's a real good reason uh, for me to do this. So I'm going to post out on my page right now the beauty of heaven that's what we're going to talk about today so share that out on your timeline hashtag live hashtag shared hashtag recorded and get that out there if you would all right so here's the deal while i'm describing heaven i'm also wanting to tell you what heaven is not we talked a little bit about it on yesterday that heaven is not boring i want y'all to hit some thumbs up if you realize heaven is not boring heaven will not be boring heaven is going to be <laughs> heaven is already amazing for those who are there, but it is becoming more amazing all the time. It is a continuing, it's, it's amazement that doesn't stop. It's beauty that doesn't have a peak. It is complete yet progressing. It's, it's, it's beyond our imagination what heaven is. Heaven is not going to be boring. So hashtag number one, heaven will not be boring. Let me tell you who would try to convince you that heaven is boring. The enemy, Satan. Lucifer is his name. Lucifer was one of the archangels who covered a third of the angels of heaven. Lucifer was a worshiping angel. He was a worshiping leader of a section of angels who brought glory to God, but Satan through merchandising, scripture says, that he was taking a little bit of the glory that was supposed to pass through him to its rightful owner, God. But he was taking some of that because he wanted to be God, and he was accepting that glory, and he was cast out of heaven. Let me tell you why. You need to understand why Lucifer uh, does not want you to go to heaven. Lucifer does not want you to understand heaven. Lucifer doesn't want you to experience or be excited by heaven. He wants to confuse you. He wants to... Um, not just lie to you. He wants to put a little bit of truth and a little bit of lie. He wants to disillusion you uh, about what heaven is because he knows what heaven is. He knows what experience he had when he was in the presence of God. Satan wants to deceive you about heaven. Satan wants to deceive you about the afterlife. Satan knows if you could get a glimpse of heaven and if you had enough faith that there might be a heaven, or if you had the faith of a mustard seed, if you had any, if you could get, Satan does not want you to get to heaven. He doesn't want you to go to heaven because he knows what it's like. So he'll give you every deception to keep you from there. He can't stand you. Lucifer hates you. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy from you because not just because he hates you, he does hate you, but the reason he hates you is because God loves you so much. It's because you are imperfect and yet forgivable. You are imperfect, yet he gave himself to cover you so that you could go to heaven. And Lucifer has no options. Lucifer cannot go to heaven. So we want to talk a little bit about today the beauty of that place that Lucifer so desperately wants to keep you from. Heaven will not be boring. Number one, we kind of started this yesterday, but we're going to really get into it today. Will we know our loved ones who are in heaven? 
Will we know our loved ones? Will they still be Bill? Will they still be Frank? Will they still be uh, Martha? Will they still be, you know, Cindy? Will they still be uh, Jim? Will, they, will, will we know them and will, will they know us? Will we be us when we get to heaven? Or will we change into this naked little baby cherub with wings and harps and, okay, this is, this is a great place for me to get right now. No human being that has ever been born or ever died, that's all of us, all of them, we're going that direction. No human being, no person has ever become an angel. Ever. Never. Never in the history of anything. So here's one of those places I want you to say, I wonder why I believe that when we die, we become an angel, or when Uncle... Um, Lester passed away, he become an angel, now he's my guardian angel, or when so-and-so died, you know, there are people who believe that, but they don't know why. They, they say it all the time, he's watching over me, he's my guardian angel, he gained his wings last night, guys. People who go to heaven do not get demoted to angel. I want you to hear that clearly. People who go to heaven who are found in Christ Jesus do not get demoted to angel. Why would you want to go from being a son or a daughter of God to one of the servants? Why would you want to go from being a son or daughter of God to one of the messengers? Why would you want to go? Angels are not children of God. You are children of God. Angels are created beings. You're a made being. When people die... We don't go to heaven and sit on clouds and play harps. Let me tell you something else we don't do. We don't go up there and sing hymns all day long. Some people, especially from my culture and my area, think that when you die, you just go sing all the time. Guys, that might be heaven for some of y'all, but that'd be hell for me. Every, everybody, you know, ain't going to be the singing folk. We're going to worship. And I think that may be where the confusion sets in. The angels are up there crying, holy, holy, holy. They're singing, man. Dude's got a choir. What he wants from you is you. He wants Kelly Saldo, his daughter. He don't want Kelly Saldo demoted to an angel. He wants Cliff Lancaster. He don't want Cliff Lancaster, his son, demoted to the choir over here on the cut. He wants, he wants you, uh, Chip, he wants you, Brock. He wants you, Jennifer. He wants you, Tammy. He wants he wants Doug. He doesn't want some some refabrication. He wants me. He wants you. He wants his sons and his daughters to come up there and experience angels serving us. You don't get demoted when you go to heaven. So will you know each other? Will you know each other in heaven? Yes, you will. You will not only know each other, you will be known in heaven. We're going to know you. I'm going to know you. But let me say this, and this is very important. Everyone who dies, according to my perspective and according to Jesus Christ, who claimed to be the Son of God and rose from the dead, and those who knew him best and loved him most, and five hundreds at a time said he rose from the dead, claimed to be the Son of God, said that everyone doesn't go to heaven. Matter of fact, he said most people don't. That shouldn't bring fear to you. That should compel you to go out and to tell people, show people, live in front of people, love people, and forgive people who hurt you and who are far from God and who need Jesus. Guys, every funeral, it cannot be a true statement that they're in a better place. So let me say this. Yes, you will know the people in heaven. And yes, you will be known by the people in heaven. But everybody you knew and everybody you know is not going to heaven. And the question is, are you? Do, do you know the way? Thomas, you know the way. Well, okay, it's the Baptist faith. No, it's not. Thomas, you know the way. Jesus says, Thomas, you know the way. Oh, yes, the temple. No, it's not. Thomas, you know the way to get to heaven. No, no, is, 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 is it the temple? No, it's not the temple. You know the way. It's the Calvinist way. What the what a way? Man, like I said yesterday, John Calvin is a hiccup in eternity. Thomas, the way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. 
So will you be known? Yes, you'll be known. You'll be able to walk up to people that you've read about in the Bible. You'll be able to walk up to Noah and say, Noah, tell the truth, man. What was it like on the ark? Noah, did, were there dinosaurs? At what, at what year did the dinosaurs show up? Was they here before or after? Did the, what happened there, buddy? What happened to the big rah, rah? We had Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Did it look like that? You'll be able to walk up to Moses. You'll be able to walk up to Mary, ladies, and say, Lady, girl, what was you thinking? You'll be able to walk up to Matthew. You'll be able to walk. You will know them, and guess what? They'll know you. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, those who have gone before us, who are cheering us on in the faith to make it. Not only will you be able to see those that you know, you've read about in Scripture, you'll be able to see your loved ones who were in Christ. That is extremely important that I uh, magnify or that I emphasize who are in Christ. You're not going to see all your loved ones. I'm not going to see all my loved ones. But those who are in Christ, you will see them. And Grandpa, who at the end of his life began to lose some of his cognitive abilities and he began to lose his memory and he began to lose some of his function of his body and he began to get weak and frail and old. Grandpa is not going to be weak and frail and old. Uh, Dad's not going to have Alzheimer's. Your mom is not going to suffer with cancer. Not only will they not be suffering with Alzheimer's, cancer, dementia, old age, frailty, uh, the limited bodies that we have right now, they're going to be brand spanking new. They're going to be walking, running, leaping like a calf let out of a gate, Scripture says. Uh, that's found in Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. It's going to be like a calf let out of a gate. I can remember that, and then you know, some of y'all who know me best know that I was raised by my grandmother. That is my mama. Uh, she was in her 80s, and she would tell me, she says, Doug, one of the most difficult things about aging is that my body is, let's say, 83 and, and, and the me inside's about 27. She was limited. She still had that, that life. She still had that desire. She still had that calf let out of a gate. And the reason she does is because she's just passing through. Her body was aging, but she was not. I bet some of you recognize that. Can any of you uh, recognize that? Hashtag yep, yep. My body's aging. There's things I can't do that I used to do. But inside of me... Whoa! Yeah, if this body didn't hurt, if this body didn't ache, if my knees would bend, if my memory was still sharp, I, you know, there's still this, ah, this life out there because, yeah, you're made for more than this. You're going to see your loved ones, those who are found in Christ. Let me tell you something. You're going to see your babies that you never met. You're going to see them. You see, Jesus was quite plain about this. Get out of the way, adults. Let the children come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And I know that also means a child, you know, childlike, not a childhood, but a childlike faith. But I'm telling you right now, if there's any silver lining to the millions of unborn babies that have been lost at the hands of many different reasons, natural and unnatural causes, those babies went to the arms of Jesus Christ. And they were spared, and they are living, and they are alive. You will know them, and they will know you. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12, that when I'm in heaven, Paul says, not only am I going to know, I'm going to be known. Let me give you another passage where Jesus makes it a point to bring up these names. Jesus says, and as for the resurrection of the dead, Matthew 22, 31 through 32, have you not read what was said to you by God? Jesus is saying, let me remind you something about the dead. Let me remind you something about people who have fallen asleep in Christ. And as of the resurrection of the dead, let me remind you something. Have you not read what my father said? Verse 32, I am God of Abraham. I am God of Isaac. I am God of Jacob. These three individuals were dead when Jesus quoted this, but listen to what Jesus said. My Father God is not God of the dead, but God of the living. Whew. Jesus made it a point to calm their fears, to answer their questions, to speak into what their, you know, their great wonder was. When people die, 
Do they become an angel? No. When people die, do we forget them? No. When people die, do they transition to the point they're unrecognizable? No. Jesus made it a point to mention their names. Abraham is not dead. Isaac is not dead. Jacob is not dead. And they're still known by these names. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12, when I get to heaven, I will know and I'll be known. Guys, if your grandma and grandpa and mom and dad and you know those who you've lost tragically, if they were in Christ Jesus, I'm not going to make you a false promise. If they were in Christ Jesus, you will see them again, you will hug them again, you will kiss them again, you will know them again as you knew them before without the limitations of sin on them or on you. Heaven is going to be a place of unimaginable beauty. Revelation chapter 21 Verse 15 through 21, the one who spoke with me had a gold measuring rod. This place is going to be beautiful. I want you to know what they're experiencing. A gold measuring rod to measure the city and its gates and its walls. This is talking about the new Jerusalem that God is creating to bring down out of heaven that you and I will live in on this earth. Do you recognize that there's going to be a time when you live on this planet with a new heaven and a new earth and Jesus is there in his physical body? Do you realize that there's going to be sections of heaven? There's going to be authority in heaven. There's going to be you know, responsibilities in heaven that you're going to grow and reap and eat. And I mean, you're going to the gold measuring rod to measure the city. This is just one of the cities and its gates and its walls. The city is laid out like a cube. The New Jerusalem is going to be like a cube. Its length is as great as, as its width. And the measurement of the city with the rod, 1,500 miles. Its length, its width, and height. It is a 1,500 mile cube. So not only does it go out this way and that way, the city goes up this way. Can you imagine a 1,500-mile high? 1,500-mile <laughs> 1, high skyscraper? <laughs> Woo! God's got room for you. In my Father's house, there's room for you. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. And, and, he me and this is just the city. And he measured its wall 72 yards, according to human measurement, which are also angelic measurements. So, you know, you know, that's like metric. We don't understand here. We don't. I don't. The material of the wall was jasper. The city was like pure gold and clear glass. The foundation stones of the city were adorned with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation stone was jasper. The second, sapphire. The third was a word I can't even say, caledony or something. The fourth was emerald. Fifth, sardix. Um, the sixth was creosafe, the eighth and the seventh, and the jasper and amethyst and topaz. And the 12 gates are 12 gates, guys. The 12 gates were 12 singular pearls. <laughs> Can you imagine the gate of a 1,500-mile high city being a singular pearl? There was 12 of those. And each one of those gates were a single pearl, and the streets of the city were like pure gold, like transparent glass. Those gates open up where you can go out, you can come in. Those gates stay open both day and night because there is no night. Pretty cool, huh? Not only are you going to see this, you're going to see new colors. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has entered the heart of man what God has prepared. There's going to be new colors. There's going to be new sensations. Guys, can you imagine new colors? Of course you can. We can't imagine what we haven't seen. That's why I'm telling you. There's going to be new colors. We can't imagine what we haven't felt. That's why I'm telling you there's going to be new sensations. There's going to be new tastes. Heaven is going to be unimaginable in its beauty. And you're going to not only see Mama, Papa, who are in Christ. You're not only going to see new colors you've never seen before and taste new tastes you've never tasted before and experience new sensations that you have never experienced before. But you're also going to see Jesus face to face. And throughout history, to see God face to face would have killed you. But in this new transformed body, when you see him face to face, you will recognize that you never lived. That the life you once knew 
was nothing. <laughs> that the joy you once experienced was less than. That the colors that you were colorblind to heaven. All of us, if you're colorblind, you know, you hear people talking about colors and you're just like, oh, that's great. Uh, that's what heaven's going to be like. When we look back at red, when we look back at brilliant color, we're going to be like, I was blind, but now I see. We're going to hear music and we're going to say, I was deaf, but now I hear. I thought I could walk, but I was lame. I can run up here and not grow weary. I can walk up here and not faint. I can run up a mountain, run down a mountain, chase grandma up a mountain and down a mountain. It's going to be... It's unimaginable. I'm trying to appeal to senses with things we've never seen. Tomorrow I'm going to talk more in depth about the new perfected bodies we will receive. But today I want you to understand, you will know and you will be made known. You will know Abraham and Abraham will know you. You will know Isaac and Jacob and David. You will know those found in Christ. And they will know you. Mama, Papa. Tomorrow we'll talk about these new perfect bodies we're going to get. We'll continue to talk the conversation about the beauty of heaven. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that you continue to give us a glimpse into eternity, a glimpse into our home, because this world is not our home. This world is not our home. Father, continue to give us a glimpse into eternity. Father, that you have put a longing inside of us that we can be content while here, but impatient about glory. Content while here, but impatient about glory. Content right here, but impatient about glory in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Hit some heart, hit some likes, hit some arms, hit some hashtags, like, share. Get this out on your page. You guys are blowing the shares away. Like close to 100 shares every single day now. Uh, like 50, 60, 70, 80 people, 85 people in here live each day. Guys, you're doing it. Please get this out there. Tell people about it. Let them at least have something to consider before making a decision about eternity. Love you guys. Bye-bye.